question. And um, first of all, I would distinguish a couple of things. One is the non-traditional students from the traditional students. So we now know through the U.S. Department of Labor that the average person between the ages of 17 and 40 is going to have something like 15 to 20 different jobs. Uh, and so the profile of most of the folks being in higher education being you know, 18 to 22 year olds who still need social development, social norms, friends, drinking beer, playing sports, uh, doesn't apply as much or at all to this non-traditional group. So they probably don't need that. And so first number one is it serves that element better than the traditional element. As to the traditional student population, I wouldn't suggest that it replaces the campus or the social norming or social experience that occurs on campus and the person-to-person -person exploration, interaction, you know, academically that takes place. I view it as a partial supplement or partial supplantation for the traditional undergrad. I would also go so far as to say it can and should transform K-12 education. Uh, obviously, students in K-12 need to be in the environment that they're in for lots of different reasons, but one of the frustrations I have with the K-12 system currently is it has been too much of a one-size-fits-all assembly line when we now know that students learn differently, different speeds, different aptitudes, different backgrounds, different languages, different cultures. And particularly in our most challenged school districts in the country, the ability to semi-customize the education experience is more important than ever. Because if you go into a classroom, say in Franklin Middle School in North Minneapolis, five minutes from here, you will see in a particular eighth grade class, students that speak seven, eight, nine different languages. You'll have uh, children from very varied backgrounds ranging from extremely challenged to not. You will have uh, children in the class that are labeled either behaviorally or, or physically disabled. You will have lots of churn in the class. The attendance between fall and spring is horrific. Uh, you know, about a third or more, approaching half of the class who shows up on Labor Day won't be there on Memorial Day because of the instability in the housing patterns and a variety of other things. So, first of all, having a curriculum that's at least standard and is, would be helpful. So if they move, they still don't have a different class. But think about this. If you're one teacher with that much uh, variation in your class, and you're coming in there with one standard lesson plan, one standard assignment, that may not be ideal. In fact, I'd say it's not. But let's say you can use the software of a company I'm familiar with that's third grade math and your challenge is to teach uh, multiplication tables or addition, subtraction, division tables. You assign that to the class. And let's say that that can be done uh, through technology and the computer begins to discern in your answers that you have addition and subtraction completely under control, so the computer starts funneling you more multiplication and division questions because it knows you need work in that area. So instead of wasting your time on more addition and subtraction, say you got it up through five or six mastered, now you're into more where you need the help. And then the computer begins to discern, you got your ones through fours mastered, but not your fives through nines. So it starts funneling you not more ones through fours, but fives through nines. And then let's say you get about half of that done in class. The rest of it goes home as a homework assignment. So you go home and finish the questions at home, if you've got the capabilities, hopefully, at home. Uh, and then the next day on the teacher's desk, without him or her ever having to touch a piece of paper, pops up a report of the kids in the class. They got 100 questions. Uh, you know, one student A got these results, student B's got those results, student C's got these results. It's all automated, it's customized, and the computer can discern uh, the, the ability and the need to semi-customize the learning experience mm -hmm. for you. Uh, and that's with one teacher with 30 kids in a class now and standardized textbooks and minimal time and lots of distractions, it's tougher and tougher to do. So technology can actually help, not replace, but help I think even the K-12 experience, and you should see the tutorials on these things now. This is not, you know, some numbers pop up on a screen. They have the ability to take all of the power, you know, the, of a video games and put it into algebra. So, you know, we go home with my daughters and we play a road race game. I can pick the car, the make of the car, the engine, the transmission, <coughs> automatic or manual. I can pick the tires. I can pick the road surface. I can pick the country. 
I can pick the track, I can pick the elevation, I can pick the sound, I can pick whether I want it in surround sound, I can play with my two daughters in my living room, I can play against somebody in Malaysia. Um, and we drive this thing and you feel the bumps in the road, you, the imagery and sound of it is stunning. Take the power of that and how it grips young people and put it into eighth grade algebra and compare that to what we have now, which is uh, inconsistent to be charitable about it in terms of the quality and delivery of the, of the service.